This is Dr. Holt. Uh, in this video I want to go over an acceleration versus time graph, discuss how to create your velocity versus time graph, how to find out what your position is by doing it graphically, and then we're going to use the equations to validate that you'll get the same answer. In this example, I have an initial velocity of negative 40 meters, and I have an initial velocity of negative 10 meters per second. All right, we're going to start drawing the velocity versus time graph. Here I have my acceleration. So what you want to do on these is to find out what the area is under the curve. So if you look at this part, we'll just come straight down. We're going to break this. And the area on the curve is going to be between here and the this axis here, as well as between this area, this area here, and this axis here. That's what we're trying to find. So if I was going to calculate this, and I'll run this and we'll do it in red that the area between here I got 20 of a height and I'm coming over 3. I'm letting my time here, each one of these tick marks is going to equal to 1 second. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 total is this. So area here I got 1, 2, 3. I'm going up I'd have plus 60 here. When I calculate this I got 10. I'm coming over 2. I got plus 20 here. When I get to this point, I'm going down 15. I'm going over 3. So 15 times 3, that give me minus 45 here. Here I have an uh, acceleration of 5. I'm going on 1, 2, 3, 4. 5 times 4, that's going to be plus 20. All right. So let's do the velocity first time. Now, we're starting out at negative 10. So we'll come down here. We'll find out. At, we're starting out right here at negative 10. So we need to come down and put a tick mark right there. That's going to be my negative 10 meters per second. And again, that represents what the value I have right there. Okay, over the first three seconds, I'm going to add 60 to that. So 60 minus 10 gives me a minus 50. So I come over 1, 2, 3, I go up, I hit 50, and 50 would be right there. So now I'm going to draw a line between there. And that's what that would look like. Now, a couple things to note. We can define that we know what the slope is. We'll call the m value of what the slope is by the acceleration. It says it should be 20 meters a second. So the m value of this would equal to 20 meters per second squared. Now you can verify that because how far are you going up? You're going up 60, you're going from negative 10 to 50. 50 minus negative 10 is 60. I'm doing that over 3 seconds. 60 divided by 3 gives me a slope of 20 meters per second squared. So yeah, it works perfectly. All right, now we come over and we'll see what's taking place here for the next 2 seconds. I'm going to another 20. So in 2 seconds, which I had 50, I'm going to go another 20. So I'm going to go up 10, 20. That would be a tick mark right there. My line would go from here to there. And again, the slope of that line would be my acceleration. And it says it should be 10. We'll see if that's correct. I'll go ahead and put the mark over first before I verify that. And I'm getting the m value here as 10 meters per second squared. So we, what we did is we went up 20. We were at 50. We go up to 70. So 70 minus 50 is 20 over 2. That gives me a slope of 10. So we know that's correct. Now what's going to take place here? I'm lost 45 over a 3 second time interval. So again, here I'm at 70. So I take 70 minus 45. That's going to give me a value of 25. So I need to be all the way back down to 25 in 3 seconds. So I come over 1, 2, 3 seconds. I'm going to go all the way down to 25. That 25 would be somewhere right about in here. So I'll draw a line between there and there. And again, our, my slope, the m value, should be the same thing the acceleration is. And acceleration is what? Negative 15. So I'll write that down, then we'll verify that's correct. So when I do that, the position here would be 25. So I take 25, 
I minus my initial position which was 70 and I divide it over that time interval 25 minus 70, minus 70 gives me minus 45 I divide that by 3 and what do I get? Minus 15 and that's meters per second squared so we know we did it correctly alright now let's go back and see what's taking place here I've added 20 more of my area for the next four seconds so I have 25 I need to go up to 45 so we'll go up to 45 45 should be right about there I draw my line between here and there again the slope we can verify it to confirm my slope should be the value here which is going to be 5 so I got 5 meters per second squared we'll check that that value again is going to be 45 so I take 45 I minus the value I had here which is 25 I divide that by my time interval of 4 and that gives me 5 meters per second squared so we know our graph is correct alright so that's what your velocity versus time graph would look like now if we want to find out what our position is we need to find out the area under the curves here's what I'm going to recommend to do that is break this into some shapes that you're familiar with I'm going to come down to here I'm going to come over to here. All right, I can come down to here. And let's see if there's another. I'm going to change. Actually, I'm going to go back. I'm going to change it just a little bit to do this one. I'm going to see if I can break it into some other shape. I'm going to come down to here. I'm going to come over here. And again, try to break it into shapes. It's going to make your life easy. something like that. Now let me straighten this one up. Got a couple of these I want to straighten them up. Make them look a little bit better. That's a little crooked there. Okay, and then we got this little guy here that we need to figure. So I'm going to label these as areas we need to figure out. We need to find out this little area here. We'll call that area 1. We'll call this area 2. We'll have area 3 area 4, area 5, area 6, area 7, and area 8. Alright, the hard part, and I guess I shouldn't say it's hard, is trying to find out what it, what is this point here? Where does it cross this timeline? Well, the easiest thing to know is that we know the equation for this line because we have the y-intercept and we know slope. So we can go back and say that the velocity is going to equal to the slope, which is 20 meters, sorry, meters per second squared, times t, which is the time, minus 10 meters per second. What do we know the velocity is here? We know it's zero. So we're going to set that equal to zero. Okay, I'm just going to drop my units to make my life a little easier. I got 20 t minus 10 is equal to 0. Move the 10 over. I will get 10 is equal to 20 t. Divide by 20. 10 divided by 20 is equal to t. t is equal to 1 half. So we know right now that this crosses the timeline at 1 half of a second. So if I was going to find the area of number 1, I'm going to use the equation 1 half times the base times the height. Alright, so we're going to do that. That's going to give me 1 half. The base now is going to be this distance here, which is 1 half, times my height, which is negative 10. So that's going to give me negative 10 over 4, which gives me a value of negative 
0.5. All right, and then we can put we can go ahead and put units on that. And that would actually be good. Let's do that. So this this one half is going to be time. This had a slope of sorry not slope. This had a um, a height of 10 meters per second. So let's just change this real quick. I'm going to make these units into seconds. Bear with me just a second. So this has the units of seconds, and I'll do it like that. This had it into 10 meters per second negative. And again, when we did this, I'll put these in. I had 1 half times 1 half. Well, what happens would it, is your seconds cancel out here. So we need to get this in meters, in which we do. Okay, so that's right there is the change in position right there between zero and one half. Let's do number two. I'll do it in blue, as we've been doing. I'm going to find the area of this. My base, I got one, two, three. It'd be three minus one point or three minus one half. That's two point five would be my base. So that area is going to be one half times, and I'll put my I'll put the units in this time to make our life easier. Two point five seconds. My height is going to be fifty because this is my height right here. That's going to be fifty meters per second. My seconds cancel out, and that gives me point five times 2.5 times 50. That gives me 62.5. So my displacement between a half a second and three seconds is going to be 62.5 meters. Okay. And if you want, it's a good idea you could write that in as you go along. It makes no difference. You could say this is 60 2.5 and you can say this little area here is uh, negative 2.5 and we could put the units on there meters and meters all right number three now the number three is not going to be bad right because we have a height of 50 we're going over two so that has to be 100 right here so come down here we'll say number three is going to equal to 100 meters. Okay, now we'll add number four. Number four, we've gone over two. We have gone up a value of 10, 20. So one half base times height. So two times 20 is 40. Divided by two, that gives me a, an area there of 20. I'll write like this 20. Again, that's meters, and we should put meters here, too. All right, so area four is 20 meters. Put that over here. We go to number five. Now, number five is going to be a little harder. We need to find out what this value is here. Now, we know that we said this is going to be 25 here, right? So, we are at 70 here, we're at 25 here. 70 minus 25 gives me this value, height of 45. We're going over 1, 2, 3. So we're going to say 1 half times my base, which we said was 3, times my height, which is 45. That gives me 67.5. Okay, so we know the area there. What number is that? Number five. All right, now we go to number six. Again, number six. We know this is 25 here. We go one, two, three. Three times 25. That gives me a value of 75 meters here. So number six is 75 meters. Okay. And again, this, this really isn't that hard. It's, I mean, it's easy to make mistakes um, by making 
you know, may, maybe you're making a mistake during the calculations, but the theory behind this isn't that difficult. You're just breaking this into uh, shapes you know and find the area. So here we're up 25. We're going our 1, 2, 3, 4. So that'd give me an area there of 100 meters. So 7 is 100. Now we go to number 8. All we got to do is find out what our, what, using 1 half base times height, what is our height. Here we said we are at 45. Here we're at 20. So this is going to be 20 here. 1, 2, 3, 4. 20 times 4 is 80 divided by 2. That gives me a value of 40. So number 8 is 40 meters. Okay, so now to find my position, my final position here, all I got to do is add up all these area and, and add it to the initial. We go back to the initial. Initial was negative 40. So we will say negative 40 plus all this area is going to give me um, where my position is going to be. So now we got, run this real quick, we got negative 2.5 plus 62.5 plus 100 plus 20 plus 67.5 plus 75 plus 100 plus 40. It gives me, so I'm adding 462.5. That's my displacement. That gives me a, a position at 422.5 meters. Oops, left one in there. 422.5 meters when t is equal to the total, which is 12 seconds. And that's, that's all you got to do to find the area under the curve graphically.